Let's talk hockey, more specifically hockey equipment innovations. There have been many innovations for each of the 11 or so items of equipment hockey players wear and use. This video is going to focus upon the most important item of equipment in terms of performance, skates. Before we look at skates in more depth, let's take a very quick look at about 120 years of hockey equipment history. This is the team picture of the 1893 Winnipeg Victorias. The Vicks went on to win the Stanley Cup in 1896. As you can see, equipment was pretty much an afterthought for the Vicks. Skates and sticks were in. Here's Hall of Famer Ace Bailey, who played for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the mid-1920s and early 1930s. Quite a difference in terms of equipment compared to the Vicks players. Ace is wearing a number of architectural innovations, including tube skates, shin pads, pants, and gloves. The equipment materials employed at this time were primarily leather, canvas, felt, animal hair, bamboo, rattan, cotton, and wool. Our second Hall of Famer, the Golden Jet, Bobby Hull, played for the Chicago Blackhawks during the late 1950s and throughout the 1960s. Bobby's displaying two architectural innovations, shoulder and elbow pads. Materials had stayed much the same from Ace Bailey's time. Still primarily leather and felt, but a revolutionary innovation occurred in the 1950s with the introduction of plastic and fiberglass for use in shin pads, shoulder pads, pants, and gloves. Here's our third Hall of Famer, Denny Potvin, patrolling the blue line during the 1980s. Only one new piece of equipment is on display here, the helmet. Another item of note is the tube skates are gone, replaced by a revolutionary innovation, the plastic blade holder. Here's future Hall of Famer and Winnipeg native Jonathan Taves, circa 2012. Most of the equipment Jonathan is wearing is the result of many regular and revolutionary innovations since the 1980s. For example, the design of his skates are pretty much identical to Denny Potvin's, but the materials used for Jonathan's skate boot are radically different. Today, skate boots are made of composite materials rather than leather and nylon. This revolutionary innovation occurred about 10 years ago. Now, let's take a closer look at skate innovations. This is the stock skate from 1570 Scotland. Not much going on here. Basically wood and iron strapped onto a boot. A niche innovation. This is the self-fastening skate made in the 1860s by the Star Company in Nova Scotia. Really the same concept as the stock skate, but the innovation is the fastening mechanism. No straps required. The lever and spring mechanism held the blade tightly to a boot. The next step in the evolution of skates happened in the 1890s, when the Star Company introduced skates with the blade permanently attached to a boot. This revolutionary innovation set the stage for skates that we use today. Here is Star's Silver King tube skate introduced in the 1920s. This architectural innovation provides the basic design for skates still used today. Along with the stainless steel tube blade holder, there are two significant improvements in this design. The toe cap and the shorter cut of the boot around the ankle, allowing for a greater range of motion. Now we move on to the skates that became the standard for professional hockey players from the 1940s to the mid-1970s, the legendary CCM SuperTax. CCM acquired the Tax brand from 1930s era skate boot maker and Manitoban George Tackaberry. You can see a number of regular innovations on these skates including toe cap and heel reinforcement, felt padded tongue, tendon guard, and the introduction of a rubber plastic sole. During the 1970s, SuperTax lost their dominant market position with other skate makers emerging. The Tuck plastic blade holder was a revolutionary innovation introduced in the 1970s, as seen here on this pair of Bauer Supreme Custom 100s. As you'll see on our next pair of skates, the Tuck blade holder is still in use today. Here is the cream of the crop for skates in 2012. Bauer Supreme Total 1 and XGs. These skates are the culmination of the revolutionary innovations that began about 10 years ago the elimination of leather in skate construction. The NXG's boot is made solely of composite materials. The composites used for this boot allow for thermal forming. 
After the boot is heated, the user puts the skate on and fastens it. As the composite cools, it forms around the user's ankle and foot, providing a 360 degree customized fit. Another really significant innovation with composite skates is reduction in weight. For example, a single size 8 NXG skate only weighs 695 grams. Here's a quick video from Bauer describing NXG technology. Hi, I'm Keith Duffy, Senior Category Manager for Skates at Bauer Hockey, and today we're here to talk about the new Supreme Total One NXG. The new Supreme Total One NXG builds upon the platform that we started two years ago with the launch of the original Total One. Supreme Total One NXG has a patented flexible tenon guard, even more flexible than the original Total One. This exposed injected tenon guard eliminates layers on top of the tenon, allowing us to help reduce weight, but is specifically designed and engineered to give the player five degrees greater range of motion. Inside uh, the tenon guard, the design intention was to add a little uh, padding, so it's the first time we have this feature, and it gives a, a better feel, a better comfort feel on the inside of the skate. Some improvements on the um, on the three flex tongue. We added the protection component into it, so we made it a little bit wider. Um, it feels more comfortable, it covers the foot better, and uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, you know protection from slap shots. And We've improved the three flex tongue by giving it better coverage on the top of the foot. The new Supreme Total One NXG utilizes our 3D lasting technology and a curved composite quarter technology. A couple of great features that we carried over from the original Supreme Total One are Total Edge Comfort. It's a simple overlay over the collar of the boot that helps alleviate abrasion high on the ankle. Our ultra lightweight vented outsole provides a much more breathable skating experience and also helps the skate dry out much faster. The NXG also has a new footbed with a great new feature, Ergo Toe Protection, to help alleviate abrasion inside the toe cap. The Total One NXG skate features a hydrophobic grip light liner. It's extremely lightweight, durable, and helps pull water away from your foot. The Total One NXG also features the Tuck LS Fusion Runner, which is 27% lighter than our LS2. On a size 8 skate, that equals 33 grams in total weight. We never think that we've achieved uh, the best skate. We always think there's room for improvement. We put a lot of work into researching on how we can improve. And you know, always listening to the players. You know, listen to what they need and, and what they want. And we'll never rest until we do the ultimate skate. And, and I don't even know if that's possible. But I think it will always keep on evolving, just like anything else in, in, in life. The NXG is a pretty sick skate, but what's the future for skate innovations? One possible path is a niche innovation: heated skate blades. Thermal blades are heated, which provides a thicker layer of water between the bottom of the blade and the ice surface, potentially improving the glide of the skate. Here are the features of the Thermal Blade. Number one, a cell phone style lithium ion battery that supplies 7.4 volts of power. Number two, the connector from the battery to blade allows for easy replacement. Number three, a resistive wire transfers heat to the blade at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Number four, the blade has a vibration dampening over mold that provides a unique interface design with the holder. Number five, locking nut is designed to swivel into optimal position as the bolt is tightened. Number six, there is no exposed circuitry. The resistive wire that heats the blade is secured under the blade over mold. Number seven, the on off switch is a proximity sensor to ensure the blade is not inadvertently turned off during the game. And number eight, the holder has been designed with a slightly raised heel that allows for maximum knee bend and brings the weight onto the ball of the skater's foot for increased power and control. During the 2007-2008 season, five NHL players, with the approval of the league, used thermal blades. Somewhat surprisingly, the feedback from the players was negative. For the most part, they were unable to notice any significant difference in performance when compared to non-heated blades. As of 2012, Thermoblades are still around, but not approved for use in the NHL. Maybe Thermoblade is only a regular innovation away from making a breakthrough to market acceptance. Only time will tell. The end.